What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we'll look at tax efficient withdrawal strategies for retirement. So why does this matter? Well, in a recent video, I talked about how tax planning, a lot of it has to happen sort of before the fact and not something that we do in the last minute. And when we're talking about retirement, the order in which we withdraw from certain types of accounts that have a different tax status can make a big difference in how much we end up paying in taxes. In other words, how much we get to keep for ourselves in order to fund that retirement and give it more longevity or a little bit more uh, breathing room or even enhancing the lifestyle. So there are essentially three different sort of classes or buckets of accounts. You have the taxable accounts. These are accounts that have really um, kind of no special tax status at all, like a regular brokerage account. Uh, then you've got the traditional type accounts, um, or you might think of these as pr uh, accounts that are funded with pre-tax dollars. In other words, um, they have a special status where we can put in pre-tax money, but then of course we're going to have to pay taxes on the other side. And then finally, we have the Roth accounts. And these are, um, you know, like the first ones, they're funded with post-tax dollars. However, um, they do have special tax status in that um, anything that's in there gets to grow and be pulled out tax-free on the other side. Another big difference between the traditional and the Roth accounts are what's called required minimum distribution. Uh, basically, using actuarial tables, it's set up so that in order for the IRS to um, get its tax revenue, uh, they're going to have you start withdrawing from your individual uh, retirement accounts, IRAs, the traditional ones, um, according to a schedule, so essentially set up so that you'll have withdrawn all of it by the time you're actuarially most likely to, um, to die. And uh, this way, they're going to get tax on their money. Um, whereas with the Roth IRAs, uh, there are no required minimum distributions because we've already paid tax on the funds uh, before we put the money in the account. So here's a handy dandy little table and we'll start with the right because it's the simplest. Again, it's those Roth accounts that are uh, funded with post-tax dollars. So you've got your Roth 401ks or 403bs, basically your retirement accounts, and of course the individual retirement account as well. And there again, there's no tax implications to worry about. When we look at the traditional accounts, these could be traditional IRAs, they could be traditional 401k or 403bs, um, other similar types of accounts that are funded with pre-tax dollars. You will of course have to consider income taxes upon withdrawal. Those withdrawals will be taxed at ordinary income rates. And of course, then the more we're withdrawing, then of course, the higher the tax brackets that we're likely to push ourselves up into, and so the higher the marginal cost. Another important consideration with traditional type accounts is that they are a factor when considering your Medicare uh, premiums and also Social Security tax. Then finally, we've got your regular um, taxable accounts. These are things like a, a brokerage account or a savings account, only to keep capital gains taxes in mind when withdrawing. There also won't be any kind of tax shelter for any uh, dividends or capital gain distributions as well during the um, life of funds. But there is a range at which we can have a 0% tax on capital gains as long as our income is within a certain range. So that's pretty cool and more on that later. Uh, I'm a little bit dressed up today, by the way, not for the video, but because I've got a dinner to go to and it's a little bit tight and I don't want to have to change. So I figured why not? Coming back to something I said a moment ago is, um, is about the tax status of dividends and also capital gain distributions. So while we can make a choice of which of these buckets, the taxable, the traditional, and the Roth, we're going to be withdrawing from in retirement kind of the sequence, one thing that we don't have a choice at all about is um, is dividends in our taxable accounts, those being a taxable event. So we do have to pay taxes on those no matter what, and so that's just something we have no control over. At that point then, it probably makes sense to um, take those funds off of automatic reinvestment, assuming of course that those dividend payouts are less than our total expenses. <laughs> so we are actually going to spend them in, you know, sometime soon. Um, so that's what I'll be doing when I retire. I will take um, all of the funds that are in my regular brokerage account and turn off automatic dividend reinvestment so that when those dividends come through, I will be using that cash in order to, um, to fund my retirement because of course I'll have to pay taxes on that. Got no choice and reinvesting them isn't going to get rid of that tax liability. So again, what we can choose is sort of which of these buckets to withdraw from first and then second and third in retirement. And the typical advice is to go in the order of taxable and then traditional and then Roth. 
So the idea here is that we want those Roth funds, because there's no tax on them going out, uh, to be able to grow for really as long as possible. And that's kind of the idea too behind going for the taxable accounts before the traditional accounts, so that those traditional accounts can grow as well. Um, because again, sort of, they have more of a tax um, preferred status than does the taxable, which has no, you know, preferential tax treatment at all. Here we can see an example from Fidelity of how that would play out. We can see here the withdrawals from the taxable account early on. A little bit of a blend in year seven when the taxable account is running out and we need to start hitting up our traditional accounts. And from years eight to 19 where we're drawing from these traditional accounts. And of course that will incur a tax liability. That tax liability falls off in year 19 of retirement as we start to blend in more of our Roth finally. And again, we don't have those tax consequences from the Roth. These days, not only Fidelity, but also Charles Schwab and Vanguard and a lot of other advisors are um, suggesting that this might not be really the optimal strategy in, or in terms of minimizing taxes over one's um, retirement. And there are three main reasons why uh, this this sequence might not might be suboptimal and we've kind of touched on a couple of them before so first we could reduce our total tax liability um, by doing more of a different strategy such as proportional withdrawals next is that those required minimum distributions are uh, really a big important consideration these can trigger high tax bills if we're beyond the age of currently i think it's 72 it used to be 70 and a half but these things move and then again if that social security tax and medicare premiums that could be an important consideration as well and the traditional accounts uh, impact that because of these things it may make sense to push up the depletion of the traditional accounts up a little bit um, further into the present uh, than was previously thought. One way to do this would be a proportional withdrawal strategy where we say, all right, let's say that we've got 30% in taxable, we've got 40% in our traditional, and we've got another 30% in Roth then each year we'll be withdrawing according to that proportion of how much of our assets we have in each of those buckets uh, from those buckets. So, you know, let's say my retirement needs are, I don't know, $30,000, then I would take 30% of $30,000 out of my taxable, I would take 40% out of traditional, and I would take the other 30% out of the Roth, and then this would kind of level out the tax bill uh, throughout my retirement, and in some situations also reduce it against the sort of um, uh, sequential taxable traditional Roth that we were looking at previously. In this example from Fidelity, where we've actually got equal proportions in each uh, account class, we've got 200K in each for a total of 600,000, we would end up paying nearly $60,000 using the traditional sequence, whereas using a proportional withdrawal strategy, we could really cut that down to under 38,000. So a significant difference and a lot more money that we'd get to keep in order to fund our own retirement. And then of course, uh, because no situation is simple, common theme on this channel. I always talk about, um, well, basically my videos are a lot longer than they might be. I don't do bite-sized TikTok type stuff because the nuance is always important and it's always important to do our own research and figure out um, all of the different facets. So of course we could do a personalized withdrawal strategy. Some of the guidelines or, or tactics for this personalized withdrawal strategy uh, might be first taking advantage of that 0% uh, capital gains tax when your income is within a certain range or up to a certain desired tax bracket. We would pull from taxable um, just as far as possible before we would push ourselves into an undesired tax bracket. And then to fund any additional remaining needs, then we would use traditional. Then during the high uh, RMD years, we would of course be hitting up the traditional for um, as much as we could in order to reduce that liability. And then with any taxable remaining after those high RMD years, then we'd bring that taxable back into the mix. In all of the cases, sort of, um, you know, rubrics or ideas for personalized withdrawal strategies that I looked at, though, uh, one thing continues to um, persist, and that's the idea that we should save the Roth for last, because again, it does have that very uh, preferential tax treatment, so we want to let that grow for as long as possible. So what's my personalized withdrawal strategy going to be? Well, uh, for that, we have to add in yet another layer of complication, and that is that I will be using the Roth conversion ladder in order to access funds that are in my retirement account accounts without paying a penalty before the age of 59 and a half. The basic idea here is that if you take funds that are in a traditional account, convert them to Roth, 
You'll have to pay tax on that as income, of course. Um, but then after you convert it to Roth and you let that marinate for five years, depending on the actual timing, it can be less than exactly five times 365 days, right? You can kind of work with that. But in any case, it's a five year waiting period and then you're able to withdraw that uh, penalty free from the Roth. So that's kind of the strategy. That does mean that you need to plan ahead at least five years and have a runway to do that. Um, but that's what I'll be doing. So I'll be doing uh, a Roth conversion for my my spending needs for five years in the future and then to fund the current year of retirement then i'll be pulling from taxable and then of course we have that fact that um, up to about forty thousand um, dollars we can pay zero percent on capital gains and so i'll be um, looking at how much i'm converting to roth and then also how much um, uh, in capital gains I'm realizing, and also dividend income as well from the taxable. And I'll be harvesting as much gains as possible to get me right up to that cap in order to pay zero tax on that. Now, it may be unavoidable to get into the next uh, tax bracket, of course. So there will be, you know, probably a little bit of tax that I'll have to pay in the next tax, in that next tax bracket. But this continues to show uh, really the benefits of frugality so that the lower my living expenses are in retirement, um, then the less likely I am to have any kind of tax liability or at least to reduce that tax liability as well which then again mean more means more funds that I can keep for myself to fund my retirement and also makes my retirement a lot less uh, risky um, because maybe my withdrawal rate is lower as well um, because my expenses are so low so this is another benefit to the plan to retire early in Thailand that's all I've got for today. Did I miss anything about the um, tax efficient withdrawals in retirement? If you have any helpful details, do please put them in the comments below. As always, this is just my thinking and especially when it comes to tax, you want to seek the advice of a professional and do your own research. If you found this helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.